So adding on to what we were doing in section 3.3 .3 with slopes, now we're going to be doing the slope intercept form of the equation of a line. So the slope intercept form for the equation of a line, every nine, every non vertical linear equation will always have a y intercept, meaning it's always going to be crossing the y axis. So what that means is that an ordered pair zero comma B will be on the line. So that's just a fancy way of saying that the y intercept is something which we're calling b for now. So remember y intercept means the x coordinate is zero. So if we start with the slope formula, I'm gonna do a little, see how we get this formula here. If we start with the slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we know that there's a y intercept what we can do is we can substitute 0 comma b into x1 y1 which means we would get m equals y2 minus b over x2 minus 0 if we solve this for y we're going to end up getting the slope intercept form for the equation of a line so what we would get here is m equals y2 minus b over x2, the zero goes away. And then we would get, we could mul cross multiply, multiply x2 on both sides. We would get mx2 equals y2 minus b. And then we would add b to both sides. And I'm just gonna write the y2 on the left. We would get mx2 plus b. So instead of having to write that little subscript 2, we just write it as we have it right here, y equals mx plus b. So x and y is any coordinate, any xy coordinate on the line, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Okay, so I'll just label that. b is the y-intercept, and the m is the slope. So it's, that is the slope-intercept form for the equation of a line. So let's identify them <clears throat> given uh, some linear equations. So determine the slope and y-intercept. The first one we have y equals negative 2x plus 3. So the slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. The slope is multiplying on the x. The y-intercept is plus or minus afterwards. So the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 3. For the next one, we have y equals x. So our slope multiplying the x, there's technically a 1 out here. Coefficient of 1 if it's not written. So that's a slope of 1. And if there's nothing written after it, that's like saying plus 0. So the y-intercept is 0. And for the last one here, we have y equals negative 7 ninths x minus 5. So we have the slope multiplying the x, y-intercept afterwards. The slope is negative 7 ninths, and the y-intercept is negative 5. Okay, so easy enough for that. <clears throat> so we're going to be using those two pieces of information to actually graph linear equations that are in slope-intercept form. So the steps for doing this is we're first going to plot the y-intercept. So we're just going to identify the y-intercept and we're going to plot that point. Then we're going to use the slope to find a second point on the line from that y-intercept. And what we're going to do is, if it's not written as a fraction already, we're going to rewrite it as a fraction and use the fact that it's rise over run, change in y over change in x. We're going to draw a straight line through those two points with arrows at the end and then we're done because we only need two points plotted in order to graph the linear equation. And this little note right here is just something to keep in mind. If we have a positive slope, we're going to go up and to the right. If the slope is negative, go down and to the right. So essentially what I, what I do is if there's a negative, I just put it with the numerator and that'll tell you to go up or down and then you always go to the right. Technically you could go if the slope was positive, you could go down and to the left. And if the slope was negative, you could go down 
and to the right but i th i think it's just easier to or sorry you could if it was slope was negative you could go up and to the left um but as you can see it's probably just easier to stick with this one method for doing it so you don't get it confused okay so let's graph them uh so for the first one graph y equals negative three halves x plus two so let's find the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope is negative three over two, and the y-intercept is positive two. So we're gonna plot that y-intercept of two. The slope negative three over two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna erase that and I'm gonna put that negative with the numerator. So that means we go down. So numerator tells us if we're going up or down because it's the y coordinates. Denominator tells us if we're going right or left. But the way that I do it, we just always go to the right. So we're gonna go down three from that y intercept. So one, two, three, and to the right two. So that would be our other point. So I'll put down three to the right two. And all we have to do is connect those points with a straight line, put an arrow through it, and we're done. And I'll just label it. Oops. Okay, and then for the next one, y equals 3 fifths x plus 1. Well, going back to the other one real quick, we can see that we have a negative slope. So that means our graph should be falling from left to right, which it is. That's kind of a good way to check to make sure you didn't mess anything up also. Next one, y equals 3 fifths x plus 1. So slope, y-intercept. Our slope is 3 over 5. Our y-intercept is 1. So we plot down that y-intercept of 1. So we use the slope, it's positive. So that means we're going to go up 3 and to the right 5 starting at our y-intercept. So we're gonna go up three, one, two, three, to the right five, one, two, three, four, five. Connect those with a straight line and we're done. And that's y equals three fifths x plus one. And I'll just label, this will be the last one that I label like this, but we go up three to the right five. Okay, next one, y equals negative x minus 2. So for our slope, our slope is, there's just a negative, which means it's negative 1. And our y-intercept is that negative 2. So let's plot that, oops, let's plot that point for the y-intercept, negative 2. For a slope of negative 1, we want to write it as a fraction. So we only we have an integer here, just negative one. Writing it as a fraction, we just put it over a denominator of one every single time. So this is going to be negative one over one. The negative means we're going to go down one. And then in the denominator, we're going to the right one. So we start at the y-intercept. We go down one to the right one. Puts us right here. We connect those points, arrows on the end, and we're good. That's y equals negative x minus 2. So before when we were doing these, we were doing it by plotting, by plugging in x values, finding the corresponding y values, and then plotting that xy coordinate. So this way is a lot quicker. Next one, y equals 6x minus 8. So slope, y-intercept, so plot that y-intercept, negative 8. So a slope of 6 is going to mean that is the same as 6 over 1. So we're going to go up 6 units and to the right 1 unit. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right 1 puts us right here. Connect the points and we're done. Okay, so um, hopefully that wasn't too bad. So for the next thing, we're kind of going to be we're going to be creating 
the equation this time. So we're going to use the slope intercept form to help us actually write these equations. So if we're given the slope and we're given any point on the line, so technically there's an infinite number of x, y coordinates that we can, that will be on the line. If we're given one of them, what we can do is actually write, write this using, write this in slope intercept form. So for this first example here, let's write an equation in slope intercept form of the line passing through zero comma negative one and this with the slope two over three. Okay, so we want to write it in this form, y equals mx plus b. So we're going to be leaving x as x and y as y because they're the variables for the equation. We have m already, but we don't have b. In order to find b, we have to plug exactly what we have in here, where this is x and this is y, into this equation and solve for b. So it's going to be negative 1 equals 2 thirds times 0 plus b, plugging in that coordinate. So that 0 term actually cancels and we get b equals negative 1. So the y-intercept is negative 1. We also probably should have been able to realize that because the point that they gave us 0 comma negative 1, when x is 0, that is the y-intercept for your y-coordinate. So writing this as in slope-intercept form, it's going to be y equals mx plus b. So it's y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. So pretty much the only work you have to do is find that y-intercept and then plug in the slope and the y-intercept into y equals mx plus b. Let's do another one of these ones. So we have 2 comma 5 and a slope of 4. So it's passing through the point 2 comma 5. We're given the slope, so let's use all of that information to find the y-intercept. So y is going to be 5, so 5 equals... 4 times 2 plus b, 5 equals 8 plus b, subtract 8 on both sides, that's going to give us b equals negative 3. So I had to skip showing the intermediate steps. So that's all the work that we need, so y equals m, which is 4, x minus 3. So y equals mx plus b. Okay, and then for the last thing here, that was coming up with a line, equation of a line that was not horizontal and it was not vertical. So now let's come up with equations that are horizontal and vertical. So for this example, let's write an equation of a line passing through the point negative two, or two negative two. And for the first one, saying that it has a slope of zero. Okay, so what this means is, let's, plot this down real quick. So 2, negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 would be right here. A slope of 0, this is m equals 0. What that means, there's kind of two ways to think about this. What this means is that this is a horizontal line, right? Slope of 0 is a horizontal line. The short way to do this is to recognize that a horizontal line, to remember from a few sections ago, is going to be in the form y equals a number. So it's going to be y equals something. It's going to be y equals the y-intercept, which is just negative 2. So you could do it the other way that we were just doing it and recognize that there's the point xy on the graph, which is 2, negative 2, and then use that slope of zero to find the y-intercept, but you would just end up getting a y-intercept of negative two. Slope of zero would cancel the slope term, so just y equals negative two. Okay, for the next one, so the reason why I thought it was easier to think of it that way is because of this next one. So for an undefined slope, once again, we're passing through the point 2, negative 2. Undefined slope is vertical line.
So when it's a vertical line, hopefully we remember vertical lines are always going to have the form x equals a number. It's going to be x equals the x-intercept, which in this case is just x equals 2. So x equals whatever that x coordinate was. So pretty easy for these ones. You just have to remember uh, the equations for vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, so that's actually it for this section.